only. Um, so convergent modeling, if you're dealing with STLs or scan data on a regular basis, uh, whether it's legacy data, whether you're reverse engineering an old tool that you no longer have drawings or models for, they've added some new tools in uh, NX1101 that makes it a lot easier to work with. Um, there's some other tools inside that help it. And then finally, 3D, when you're dealing with STLs these days, usually the end of the game is either maybe you're doing NC programming with it, but more than likely you're going to send it to a 3D printer. And there's some new enhancements inside of NX, and I'll show them to you, and you guys can base whether or not it's uh, something worth to get into or not. But one of the new things in there is convergent modeling. And convergent modeling is... It's new in Parasolid kernel 28.1. It wasn't in kernel 28. So vendors, uh, I don't know if this is something they're gonna release to other people who license the Parasolid kernel from Siemens, like SolidWorks or Mastercam. I don't know if they're, they're, they're going to go for it or start including it in future releases. But what convergent modeling is doing is essentially allowing you to do facet modeling and traditional boundary rep modeling and kind of putting them together. So you can take a scan or an STL and without having to do a lot of editing, uh, we've had rapid surfacing in NX so you can at least get the surface detail and reference it for trims and things like that. You don't really have to do the rapid surfacing thing quite as much. Rapid surfacing I see is a lot more for repair um, these days, but um, you can do it all in the same part. So. The good side about that is, hey, we can do something more than just look at an STL file in NX now. The problem with it is that it's kind of like trying to keep a herd of horses now because you're like, oh, great, I can subtract and boolean. Oh, but I can't blend. Oh, but I can't do this. You kind of have to change the way you think about modeling and working with facet bodies now that you have a convergent body type. Um, it does speed it up. And there are certain industries, I think, are going to take advantage of this sooner than others. Um, anything medical or customized, um, footwear companies might be interested in this. So if you have um, a, a standard, let's say, mold plate, or you have, uh, you're have, you a prosthetic company, you have a standard piece that's cast or machined, and then somewhere along the process, a custom scan is done, MRI, uh, light scanning, whatever, and you want to bring the two together, subtract them, and then custom machine it, this is a really good entry point, and I think you can start using that today. Um, but one of the new concepts that convergent modeling brings up is convergent body type, and we haven't seen that quite yet. So convergent modeling, um, these are the features, feature features. Um, there's additional capabilities you can measure. Um, you can use them in assemblies. You can't mate to them using the faces. Um, I mean, just keep in mind at the end of the day, you've got a lot of little noise going on. If you zoom really close in on those surfaces, it's still kind of a dirty part in a sense. Um, but you can do Booleans, um, unite, subtract, and even intersect. I thought was surprising. Uh, you can thicken it. You can offset faces. Uh, you can scale it. Uh, geometry can be linked and patterned. Um, but it, it's, it's still kind of a little bit hit and miss. You have to kind of go at it carefully and kind of change the way uh, you think about it. But how you get started with convergent modeling is you can either, if you've got a model in X already, and I'll show an example of this, that it already has imported scan data in it, there is sort of a new feature called convert facet body, and that's underneath the reverse engineering uh, tab. So open up a part that already has scan data in it. You can convert it, whether it was imported initially, there was the JT and then there was the NX flavor that you used to have. You still have that, you now have conversion as a third choice. Um, and then the second way is if you're importing the data, you get an option how to bring it in as NX, JT, or convergent type. So, okay. So we've had STL format for a long time. And that's usually what all of us have used to send to 3D printers or service bureaus. Um, in the last few years, there's a new format called 3MF. And it's headed by Microsoft. Uh, but there is actually a 3MF consortium. If you want to check it out, go to 3MF.io. It'll tell you the standards. It's pretty much an open source 
And most of the major manufacturers, Stratasys, 3D Systems, you know, other people like that, it's really, they're starting to embed 3D printer drivers into Windows. So Windows 10 has some out of the box 3D printer support. It's extra stuff you'd have to download, but well, what's 3MF? Well, they, they wanted to have put more metadata inside of an STL file. So they were able to add things like materials. What is the powder we should use? What is the plastic we should use? Um, supports can come across and it's almost like a packet in fact when you sit, use the 3d print in NX it actually almost sort of creates a job ticket and a pack that you can essentially feed to a 3d printer so if you have maybe a production setup this is something that might be of more interest to you if you have one 3d printer that is used occasionally you're still going to probably want to use the software that came with that printer uh, for building support structures and things like that um, you know, major machine folks are getting involved. Um, but long and short, additive manufacturing in 11.01 .01 is a new license type. So if you have an 11 license and maybe you already have additive manufacturing or purchased it, you have to make sure you get the newest 11.01 .01 license because there is, it is a new licensed thing. Um, this only works with, uh, or the, Print 3D only works with Windows 8.1 and higher. So Windows 10 is probably what everybody's slated. If you're not on it, I'm not on it. I have a 7 machine, so I can't show you it. But I did grab a screen grab uh, to show you what it looks like. Um, you do have to do some pre-configuration. Anybody who remembers the uh, plotter days of yore when you had to make, you could almost make your career knowing how to set up NX plotters. Um, it's, you have to configure the printer, install the driver before you use this. Once it's installed, then you can go into file, print 3D, um, and it will allow you to do some stuff. So need it configured. Win 10 is really the, the big operating system that it goes with. Um, you can do a lot of things with additive manufacturing. Uh, you can do, before you send it to a printer, there is some analysis uh, tools in it. So validation for additive manufacturing is an, an analysis tools. You can check wall thickness. You can check overhang. Do I need angles or for it? Because if you're not using a powder-based printer, you have to print your structures along with it. So you have to make sure you have structure under your overhang. Otherwise, you're going to be dropping parts onto the platter. Uh, will it fit in the volume? So you can configure your build to match your actual printer. So you can say, yeah, I got to cut this into two pieces. And that's where you could use the trim body. Um, and then is it watertight? So that's one of the end criteria of 3D printing is if you want it to be solid, you got to have a watertight body. So it will allow you to do those checks inside of NX. General workflow is have a part already modeled, ready to run. You go and you create a new additive manufacturing part. And again, think master model. It'll bring you into that kind of assembly, you can right click on the printer build tray, either add component, change the type of printer, is it going to output STL or is it going to output 3MF, and then add the part in, position it on the build tray, add supports if you need to, and then hit print 3D and it'll send it as a packaged file off to the 3D printer. Um, so this is kind of what our casting is going to look like. Those blue things are supports. This is more of like an FDM printer that we're using here, so it had to add overhang so we don't leave uh, folding parts into our thing. And so there is in NX, if you didn't do this process, if you just go menu, I haven't found it on the main menu bar, but if you go down to the legacy backdoor menu here, you can say menu, file, and then 3D print shows up down here as an option. It brings up kind of the same window you just want to make sure, like I mentioned, Z plus is going in the right direction. So additive manufacturing. We can work with STL data now. You know, we want to do more with it. We can modify STLs. Again, think primitive. Put more into your sketches. Medical industry or something that involves a standard already designed part that needs to be custom trimmed by scan data. Seating, uh, ergo, hand things. We're working on a project that does reshaping of babies' heads. It uses custom, every baby's head is scanned and they make a custom fit head to it. This is a really good application for that. Um, and at the end of the day, I can generate 3DP files. If I, have, if I only have one printer, I'm probably still going to use the software that came with my printer. If I have a whole bunch of printers and I do this a lot, I might look at doing this in NX. 
That's just my honest opinion. Um, friends of Conmet, you are on deck. 